Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Trader Summit, and with me today I have Jake Wajastic, Chief Chart Evangelist of uh, Trend Spider. How are you? Good to see you. Hey, I'm doing well. Thank you for having me again. You know, it's great to see you. And you know, I, it's interesting. I, I kind of want to follow up, and and I I want to follow up on some of the stocks that we we talked about last time that we spoke, um, but. You know, a lot of things have kind of changed in the markets. We we've got you know equities that are under a little bit of pressure the last few days, maybe the last week or two. You know, we're heading into a strange seasonal period in the markets where a lot of people think a Santa Claus rally is coming. Some people think coal might be coming. You know, from Santa Claus. Um, you know, th there's there's obviously a lot of pressures with the the new COVID variant. Uh, we we have a uh, uh, you know more hawkish Federal Reserve commentary. Um, from a lot of Fed governors. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm also wondering, you know, you'd been pretty bullish, rightfully so, over the last couple of months, but has mm -hmm. have your tactics changed a little bit on what you're looking at? So, um, and, and before I let you go, I want to say, you know, we talked about Fubo and Spotify, and you were using the IWM to really benchmark everything around the markets, but IWM kind of broke out, came back inside of its range, what are you feeling right now? How are you looking at the markets, Jake? There's a lot to unpack here. A lot to unpack. So, you know, one thing that I've learned through experience and through books about learning about other asset managers and, and you know, some of the top uh, most respected traders in history, one thing that you have a very similar thing across the board is being able to realize when you're right and be able to press it and realize when you're wrong and take your loss. And um, so that's something that I think has been really important the last couple of months. You know, some of these stocks just did not play out uh, the way that, um, you know, I thought they would. And, and you did get initial moves up and then you got this really heavy pullback. And this year, at, there's no chart that's going to look identical, right? Like 2018 is what rings a bell to me. And this is something that kind of popped in my head earlier this year. Uh, and, and what you had in 2018 was you really had two cycles. The first cycle was you had a pretty big move up in the beginning of the year in 2018. And then you had this really strong move down into February and March before the market kind of uh, uh, caught a bid and, and continued to hit new all time highs. And uh, what you're seeing is you're seeing something kind of similar to that in the growth sector this year, where you had this really big move up in January, February. You had a really strong correction into um, into March, and 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 you know you had some of these stocks continue up, but a lot of them just continued down. And yeah. coming into the the October November timeframe, you're starting to see kind of the same thing that we saw in 2018, which was which is just this huge tax loss event. So one thing that I've been looking at a lot is the year to date anchored VWAP because I want to look and see, okay, is this stock above or below the year to date anchored volume weighted average price? And the anchor point is just measuring it since the start of the year. And what's interesting is that it will give you the dollar cost average for anybody who's participated in that stock. So let's say that you've got stock A with a, a year to date volume weighted average price of 40 and it's trading at 25, then you have a lot, the average participant is holding at a pretty big loss. And what happens into the end of the year is you have these tax loss harvesting events where people say, well, I'm down. I have, a, I had a big gain that I took and realized elsewhere, and I can offset it with, with this uh, particular loss. And you've seen that a lot in growth names and, you know, Fubo is a great example. Spotify is even a good example of this. And, uh, and it's interesting to see, you know, going into December, you have uh, the Fed kind of backing off of saying, hey, we're going to save the markets like we usually do, at least for now. They, they pretty much came out and said inflation is not transitory. And a lot of that is uh, kind of read between the lines because of their policies that they've enacted since the COVID lows and even before that. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think they're in a very weird place because you have uncertainty in the market and you have uh, Jerome Powell kind of turning a little hawkish now which really spooks the markets because now they're like, well, what happens when uncertainty comes and the Fed can't just come in and save the day like they have been for quite a while now? So 
it is definitely uh, if I were to make this a red, uh, green, yellow type of type of uh, approach, I would say definitely we're in kind of that yellow light for me where I'm like, OK, we're having these intraday moves to the upside. But, uh, you know, December, December could be interesting, especially because for everybody taking tax loss sales, they have to offset that with gains. Well, if they haven't taken their gains yet, they may start taking gains on the stocks that are up. And then you get selling all over the board. So, so that's something that I'm very cautious about. Uh, and this is not a swing traders market. So I'm, I'm much less into, you know, these swing trades as I was when we last spoke uh, because the market's changed. And if you're not changing with the market, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get wrecked. 100% agree with you. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned the VWAP and one of the, one of the things that I I've always, you know, tried to explain to traders over the years is that, you know, you, you, you revert back to the mean and, and using like the, the VWAP that you do, it's really kind of a reversion to the mean. And I know some people, you know, they, 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 they get a little upset when there's some volatility, but also keep in mind that these pullbacks that you might see in the market, they're just providing you better buying opportunities where you might want to be long a certain, certain, uh, certain asset. Um, so when you're looking at, and, and we should probably take a look at some of your charts. So when we go over to trend spider, since you're the chief chart evangelist over there, how do you, how do you get to the VWAP and, and what do you use and how do you use it? Let, let's take a look at some of your charts and see what you got. Okay, great. I'll share my screen and we'll, yeah, let's do it. We'll jump right in. So one thing that's nice about the volume weighted average price on trend spider is you can manually start it from a point, which is the anchor part of the anchored view app, uh, but you can also automate it. So if you go to uh, the indicators, I already have it pulled up, but I'll just do it kind of to show people that want to learn. Just type in anchored view app. And it'll turn, uh, pull up as alpha trends anchored view app here. And what you can do is you can anchor this automatically. And what I had mentioned was the year to date. So if I want to look at what's the volume weighted average price since the beginning of 2021, uh, yeah, 2021, uh, click apply. And you'll see here, this is the beginning of the year in 2021. And this is the volume weighted average price. And so you can see there's quite a few people holding a pretty decent profit from the beginning of the year, which is our benchmark that we're using. And in this case, you can see uh, since, since the beginning of the year, we're, we're still up about 8% from that year to date uh, volume weighted average price. So uh, that is something to consider. This is above the VWAP, but if people start taking profits because they have profits, and then they keep selling those names that they have losses in, you've got like a double-edged sword here. You've got selling in both directions, which, which can hurt the market. And the main thing that I'm keeping an eye on is this, this ascending wedge here on, on SPY. So you, we're kind of right in this zone. I'm a big user of trend zones rather than trend lines yes. because it will capture a lot more price action. And so you can see here at least, you know, this would have been a time where we actually respected this line. So if I actually draw just a regular line here, you know, let me get this. So if I start it from the original point and I draw it, we would have actually tested that precise line in this, in this particular week. But there's other times where we didn't uh, back in September. And this zone was a great way to use uh, a margin of error around these areas. So this is, uh, this is not like a, a heavy risk on period of time for me, but I will highlight some reasons why, you know, I think maybe we're getting to the point where the market is getting a little exhausted, but, you know, just because it's getting exhausted doesn't mean it's done. Yeah. Um, and so, so for me, SPY, the weekly chart, but the monthly chart, I'm more of a longer term, uh, you know, trader and, and, when I say longer term, I mean weeks, you know, maybe a month, not someone who's trying to intraday something uh, for the most part. Sometimes it makes sense. But, you know, this 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 monthly candle is not what I'd call incredibly healthy on SPY. You've got a pretty, uh, pretty defined candle here, which does not suggest buyers are in control. You can see we had a pretty similar candle here back in uh, back in January of 2020 before the uh, the covid moved down. But as always, you have to just take into account price action rather than just saying, oh, well, this this formed because look what happened. If you did that, you'd look at this and you try to short this in January of 2021. And look what happened. We continued to move up. So 
for me, uh, it is a little concerning. We broke these previous lows from last last month in November. And, um, you know, from from here, it's just all about price action. And does the Fed step back and say, maybe we do uh, pull up, pull back and continue tapering? But the, the problem is, is inflation has gotten so dramatic, the more tapering and the more they put this off, we're actually going to put ourselves in a worse situation. And I think they realize that. And that's what makes this whole thing very uncertain. That's why we're seeing the VIX pop as much as we have, because there's a lot of uncertainty around what the, the Fed is going to do and if they're going to stick to their guns, which a lot of the time they don't. So now, you know, it's interesting you point out that candle because that candle is, you know, what, uh, you know, a lot of people actually I've got I've gotten a lot of communication from other traders in the trading community, obviously, that 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 communicate with me. They're like, man, that was a very ugly, you know, that was a, a very ugly reversal candle on the month, you know, in equities. But you're exactly right. You look back a few months and um, you've seen you saw a reversal, but it, we, we unwound that. So the, the question is, since you have acknowledged all this, it is changing the way that you approach the market. So what do you what do you have as setups right now? Are you looking on the long side or are you going to be playing on the short side? Because I remember you telling me uh, just recently that you, you're, you don't really like to short the market. So so how are you going to play this? Yeah. So, you know, I think it really depends on each individual trader. Uh, so for me, I was able to lock in some really strong gains for November because I kind of w realized that the market's in this weird spot. And when I had, when I had profit, I took it. And, um, you know, I, I definitely stuck to, Hey, this was the thesis. The thesis is done. And I didn't even, I didn't even try to say, well, it could go further. I was like, okay, I'm out. I take the profit and move good on. for you. Uh, so, so for me, I'm still very much kind of someone who is reluctant to short because of the fed, right? I, I have been burned trying to kind of, because the fed is really a big part of my, my overall thesis in the markets. If the fed continues to accommodate, uh, you know, then it's going to be really hard for me to short. I'd rather, let the market pull back and look for high probability long setups, either short term or medium term. But for, for me, you know, some of the things that I'm looking at are, are things that have just been absolutely incredibly just oversold. And so one of those is PayPal. The thing that concerns me about PayPal is the fact that everybody else is watching PayPal. So that is, uh, that is something I really don't love. Another thing I don't love is the fact that we are very much below the year to date volume weighted average price. Uh, that is way up at 251. If you just pretty much take this all the way down here, that means that the average participant is down about 26% and they may start tax loss selling into the end of the year. Now you have had about a 34.5% move down since middle October while the market was actually continuing up. Uh, so that definitely shows a lack of strength. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I think you've seen some pretty big institutional sells here and, um, and that's probably spooked some people, but at the same time, a lot of the time, you know, no different if the, if something went straight up, people have to take profits. Well, if, the, if something goes straight up, then people take profits by selling. Well, if you have something that goes straight down, how do people take profits that if they're again if they're betting against the stock? They have to buy the stock back through covering their short position. So I am by no means bullish here, but I do think that you're getting to a point where you may have some uh, short covering just because they want to lock in some of those profits. Because what happens if the Fed does come in and says, "Yeah, we said that we were hawkish, but now we're back to uh, accommodating you know the, the markets," and so. Back in 2015, great example of this, the Fed said they were going to raise rates a ton into 2016, and they didn't. And a lot of people were betting against the market and got just absolutely destroyed, including myself. And so I, I definitely keep in mind that the Fed is the one that really has the power here in the punch bowl, if you want to kind of uh, compare it to the, the party in the markets, they're the ones with the punch bowl. So you always have to be careful and, and being... Being uh, short is great, but at the end of the day, the Fed the Fed can change change things quickly. But this one, I mean, I think a lot of this is tax loss selling. You've seen it in a lot of growth names, 
And uh, we'll, we'll have to see if it actually, uh, you know, holds here. But, you know, one thing that I like to do is I like to look back and, and look and see, okay, well, when's the last time you've had seven red candles in a row and or six red candles in a row? Because this is technically the seventh week now. And let me just remove this and just do six red candles. And you'll see here, we have not had any. We, this is kind of a new... Uh, this is kind of like a new dynamic we're in right now. We have not had this many red candles in a row ever. And you can see here, the six red candles in a row is just this automated pattern detection that pops up on TrendSpider. That's so awesome. then I'll go, okay, well, maybe, you know, what is four red candles? How many times have we had four red candles in a row? And what happened after that? And you'll see a lot of the time uh, that was at least some, some exhaustion there on the selling side. Back in 2016, you had four red in a row kind of bottomed out before moving up from a low of around 38. And then you topped out around 42 a couple of weeks later. Another one here, September 2018, you had four red weeks in a row. And then from the bottom around 74 to the top within three weeks, you you did move up around 15% uh, on the spot price. And then the last time we had it was back in April of 2021 uh, from a low after those four red weeks of 234 to a high of 307 within about two and a half months. So this is unprecedented territory here for PayPal. And that's always interesting because you don't have anything to compare it to. Now, as we talked about in the previous, um, the previous video, I like to use IWM as kind of a, a little bit of a proxy. Now, IWM and PayPal aren't incredibly connected because PayPal is a a pretty big, you know, mega cap at this point. So same thing though, I, I do want to get an idea of risk on risk off in the market, looking at IWM, looking at Bitcoin, looking at Ethereum. Those are kind of my risk on risk off indicators. And so here, if you look at, if you look at IWM, this is going to be the fourth red week in a row. So same thing. If you look at some of these other times where we've had four red weeks in a row since, you know, the 2016 bottom, and, and you have to be careful sometimes with the patterns, because if you have a green close, but your close is lower than your open, the system will actually pick it out as a red candle, since technically that shows up as red volume. But, um, you know, you can visually filter that out. So here's, here's an example here, four red candles in a row, bottom around 133, within about six or seven weeks, we're at 150 on the index. Uh, same thing here four actual red candles in a row in 2018 and then we continued down but this was in uh this was in october we kind of flatlined and then this is that december 2018 potential that we're going to see in this in this current market now uh this would be the fifth or this would be the fourth red week in a row going into december so definitely not the same no chart is going to be exactly the same historically but you know i would definitely be a little uh, you know, concern that maybe we are in for that. Now, one thing that one thing that does keep me a little uh, bullish here. One that was that was a, a a big sell off in the market. Generally, these are short term bottoms when we have four red candles in a row. Same thing in May 2019, four red candles in a row, bottomed out at 145, topped out at 158 about five weeks later. And then COVID, you know, that's that's kind of unprecedented. A lot of people are trying to compare this uh, new variant to like pretty much starting over with COVID. I don't see that. There's been so much research done. Sure, maybe it's a little different. Maybe there's some, you know, some things that have mutated. But I think the word mutation just scares people because half the people don't even really know what that means scientifically. And they just immediately think, you know, zombie apocalypse is coming. So um, the thing that keeps me a little uh, bullish here, at least for IWM, is the fact that you still have a lot of shares holding here. So you would really, and this is the anchored volume by price. I'm just measuring the volume distribution since the low. You would really need to, uh, to have a lot of selling, a lot of people selling at a loss for this to break down much further. So we'll see how it plays out. But for me, um, you know, the fact that we are breaking down gives us that yellow kind of light caution. But at the same time, four red weeks in a row is, is hard to, to continue down after that. You have to at least have some shorts covering short term. And then if we get a strong week, we'll, we'll kind of go back from there. But pretty much across the market, I'm very kind of yellow light, risk off in some trades short term, but 
for the most part, I want to preserve my capital going into the end of the year. The, uh, you know, the dealer isn't, the dealer is getting hot on the blackjack side. When the dealer's hot on blackjack, you're losing. So you, you do <laughs> want to, uh, you do want to kind of uh, know when to uh, hold them and fold them. Yeah, maybe and to step away from the table. Uh, you know, Jake, it's interesting that you talk about the Fed and 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 their narrative really does matter. I mean, you go into uh, you go into tomorrow. We we've got the jobs report. Um, you know, we're we're filming today on a Thursday. Um, the day before a jobs report, a lot of people are going to be viewing this probably post jobs report. Uh, the fact of the matter is, you know, if we have a if we have a weaker jobs report and maybe the data comes in a little bit a uh, little bit light, um, then you might get people actually buying equities where they think, you know, this COVID variant uh, might influence the Fed a little bit. We got the jobs report that's not so hot. And maybe the Fed uh, 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 pairs back on their taper talk because right now people are looking at the Fed that they're saying they're not flinching. Inflation is an issue. The Fed's going to, you know, stay on path or stay on course, and maybe even get a little bit more aggressive. But you know, you you give them a little bit of weak data and a COVID variant that might be enough to stick the punch bowl right back in front of your face, right? Yeah, maybe you put a couple extra shots of vodka in that. Um, <laughs> so you know, one one thing that I'm really paying attention to, and I think a lot of people should pay attention to, is what has I don't say relative strength, but what is holding the trend, right? So like if you look at a trend, it really depends on the length of the trend. The primary trend is generally something that lasts for months to years. The secondary trend can last, you know, up to weeks to months. And so one thing that I find interesting is 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 F cell. So this is one that I stopped out on uh, earlier this week around 850. And I, I did enter back in uh, and I think my average is right around uh, 848. And, and so I am down a little bit here, but it's not a, you know, it's not a position that's going to make or break the account if we pull back another 10%. It's common stock. One thing that just makes me cringe a lot of the time is people, you know, will see a chart like this and they're like, oh, I got into options. And then you go look at the options chain and you see the implied volatility on almost all of these contracts is over a hundred. And that's like an option seller's dream. So, you know, I, I, I'm in this from a common stock perspective. Uh, my my stop is pretty set at this previous uh, anchor view out from the September low, right around 7.95 or so. It may get stopped out, but I do like the fact that we're still hitting these higher lows. You're not seeing that in some of these other names, and this is one that has that renewable energy theme. And a lot of people don't like it because it hasn't done well over the last 20 years. But if you look at the the monthly setup and look over the last you know, two years, you know, quote, the, the primary trend is up. I mean, if you draw a, just a channel here, this is hitting higher highs and higher lows over the last two years. So this is one that actually is holding relatively well. Um, and uh, it's something that I'm definitely keeping an eye on. If you, if you measure the volume weighted average price from this capitulation in 2019, you're still holding these areas. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a line of best fit, but this is one that, is actually holding a lot better than some of these other names that that uh, you know people may put in that same same category. So this is one I'm keeping an eye on. But you know, right now, especially in this market, you do not want to be married to any stock. Um, and and I say that often. I'm happy to be wrong. I'm happy to change my stance multiple times a week because new information comes out. Uh, I really thought last Friday was uh, just a huge panic-driven type of event because of low liquidity in the market. And then, you know, you see a little bit of a bounce on Monday and then you start hitting new lows on Tuesday. Plus, I'm not going to sit here and say, well, I, I still think it was a low liquidity event. Clearly it wasn't. The market is responding in that way. So there's a lot of people out there that will just stick to a thesis and just go down with the ship. I'm not one of those. If I'm wrong, I'm happy to admit it because that's not going to make me money. That's going to make, that's going to lose me money. So I'm in this business, uh, you know, at least uh, in the trading side of things, Trendspire is my full-time job in, in growing our company. But, you know, in the trading business, if you're dealing with money, I consider it a business. The goal is not to lose money. It's to see what the market's showing you, take all the relevant information that's publicly available and come up with a thesis. Now, I don't think the markets are efficient. I don't believe in the efficient market hypothesis, but I do believe that the markets do react to news and that will change the status quo of the markets and how they, they operate. 
Well, you know, you're spoke, you, you speak like a true trader, uh, Jake, and that's really what you need when you're using a tool that was like Transpire that was built by traders for traders. So let me ask you this. If I'm a trader at home and I'm like, man, I like what Jake is doing. I like Transpire. How do I find out more about you? Sure. So uh, we have we have uh, Twitter, which is a great channel to check out a lot of different ways you can use the platform at Trendspider. One word on Twitter is our company account. Uh, my personal account is Jake underscore underscore Wajastic. Uh, I did change that from Trendspider J because we've just had so many spam and scam accounts trying to scam uh, people with that that handle it's kind of tied to trend spider and you know, I want to kind of remove myself a little bit from that. Uh, so I, I just did Jake underscore underscore Wajastic to kind of, you know, have people realize that like, Hey, this is not trend spider reaching out to you, telling you to sell something. And it's really sad. That, that is a problem. And it's that big of an issue on Twitter, but it is. And that's why I did have to change the handle uh, because we did have some people kind of uh, fall into that trap. So that's my personal at trend spider is the company's, Trendspider.com is the way that you can just find out a ton of information about the platform. So if you go to uh, Trendspider.com, this is your homepage. You can learn about the platform in the middle by clicking this platform tab. You can click on pricing and that's going to take you to all the different types of plans that we have available and what comes with them. And then, you know, if you do want to sign up in, in, in that type of thing, we have a technical analysis series. If you're still learning charts and want to learn things before you, you know, maybe upgrade to a higher plan, maybe you want to start on a lower plan. We have Trendspire University. It's uh, essentially something that I did uh, pretty much 11 chapters or, or so going over each layer of the platform. So there's a ton of different ways you can utilize the, the uh, platform by going to the, this resource page and we have one-on-one -on -one demos. So you can reach out to our team, hello at trendspider.com, set up a demo and go over questions that you have. And, and that's the most efficient way to do that is come with a set of questions and then you kind of allow the, the those questions to, to uh, kind of drive, drive that one-on-one -on -one demo. So you're not just getting a, a straight up demo of, okay, here's this, here's that. It's okay, I use these things. How do I use them the best way? Awesome. Well, Jake, I'll tell you what, it's, it's always enlightening to, uh, to hear from you. And what's really cool, especially going from, you know, the times that we meet and, and, and each and every time that we meet, just watching you evolve as a trader, not necessarily what you're, what you're doing, but watching your, you know, how you're approaching the market and how that changes and evolves with what you, what the market is dealing you because you have to trade what the market is giving you. And I think you do a fantastic job doing that. So thanks for joining us today. And I want to say happy holidays to you and your family and, uh, you. and, and guys and gals, if you like this video, make sure you give Jake a thumbs up and then subscribe to the channel because it's free to do so on our YouTube channel. Jake, thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure and I'm looking forward to next time. Same here. Talk to you soon. Hey traders, Blake Morrow here. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also click the bell notification so you do not miss any of our market-related trading analysis from some of the leading industry experts. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.